20 years. Almost half of my life has been at Georgetown now. It's a very quick 20 years, and I can't believe that it's gone by this fast. Somewhere out there on campus is a student who was born on the day I started work at Georgetown. I'm in denial. My students are the same age, and so am I. It is a surprise. Time has flown by, and I think probably because I enjoy my job. This is my one and only job. When recruits ask me, you know, what do you really think about Georgetown? I say, I never left, so obviously I love it. When I first started teaching, I thought that I needed to be in control of all the information. I find more and more that I don't. It really is a partnership. It's always a rewarding experience to give up the control and let the students pick up the materials. I am the non-native speaker on the Chinese faculty. I'm always the one who sends the message that, yes, you can do this. I can teach a, a class on African culture, and that is, for most of them, something very different. But they are very interested. They want to know more. I got to teach poetry. That was really the great thing. Well, I fear the blank page, so I ask them not to start with a blank page. I ask them to start with a form and urgency and some notes. I'm trying to help them learn how to think like a lawyer. It's reasoning by analogy. It's applying already established doctrines to new sets of facts and new conflicts. Nothing makes me happier than seeing students who think ethics has to be the most boring thing in the world come alive. I always say to healthcare professionals, who you choose to be any day literally has the ability to determine or influence how people are born, live, suffer, and die. I teach graduate anesthesia students. In the morning when I walk in, oftentimes they're exhausted, they haven't had the coffee yet. But once we start talking about anesthesia, they start to get really into it. Their level of engagement is what feeds my fire, if you will. The important thing for a good teacher is to have empathy. I have an implicit contract with them. I will push them really hard to learn, and they can push me really hard to help them learn. In my lab, fundamentally, we focus on drug resistance research. We hope to help cure malaria. It kills half a million people a year. I don't know if exciting is the right word, but it definitely motivates the heck out of us. I developed a passion not only for the research, but also for training students. I have been really lucky to do something that I really enjoy. a boy, good adjustment. I get to teach life through a game I love, and uh, I can't think of anything better. For me, it's about getting a group of students who are from different backgrounds, different parts of the country and the world, sort of working together throughout the whole year to make them into a cohesive team and a team that is you know, among the best, if not the best in the country. I really enjoy helping the students. It might be their first time ever in an archive and they're looking at, say, a letter from Abraham Lincoln, an authentic letter, and their eyes just light up. Well, it's always amazing working with a, a primary source document. You know, it's kind of a pathway to the past. The best part of my job is being the sleuth and finding that one obscure source. I had always relished that part of, of being a student. I used to sit near the reference desk and just eavesdrop. The reference librarians held the keys to the information kingdom. We are information pushers. We get people hooked into the information so that when they leave, they'll be lifelong learners. So that the sources we introduce them here, they'll use in the real world. I support students. So I try to lead them through their experience here and make sure that they have a transformative, positive um, experience at Georgetown. I get a lot of satisfaction knowing that I may have had even just a teeny little part in their journey.
As you watch, you know, 900 students cross the stage, it's, you know, 900 examples of why we do what we do. Colleges uh, have a, a very important role in raising adults of the future. It's not so much what they learn in the class, what goes on around the class, around the university. In the financial aid office, our goal is not just to get the students the money they need to attend. Our goal is actually to allow our students to imagine their situation in the future and to encourage them to count any opportunity as a viable one. And part of the work here really is about not just assuming that there's one way to do things, but to really think about what works best for an individual child, what works best for an individual family, what works best for a community. Well, I, I would say that this is the work of Georgetown. I guide our tenure-line faculty to scholarly publication at the highest ranking and most selective university presses and peer-reviewed journals. It just help me understand, because I, yeah, I have three office. words that I use to govern my office. They need you. Editors need you. I show them that the freshness of their perspective is actually a massive asset. What has kept me here? There are many things to love about Georgetown. It occurred to me that the formation I've received at Georgetown is the biggest formation of my life. The reason I love it is because it keeps changing me. I hope we're doing something like this in 20 years and talking about how 40 went.